In this video series, we're going to take a look at different kinds of public relations techniques, and we will have an emphasis on media relations in this series too, but, but, you know, focusing on public relations, specific techniques and, and tools of the trade for public relations. So um, I find the best place to, to start with these things as at the start. Uh, so we want to look at if we're going to develop a media relations program or public relations program, where do we start? How do we set something like that up? Whether it's starting from scratch and, you know, totally new in an organization or whether it's, you know, we're coming in and bringing our own flavor and trying to set up the program that we want to institute, but uh, whatever the case, we got to start somewhere. And so let's take a look at setting up your media relations program. Uh, this is, you know, again, imagining that you're coming in either starting a media relations, public relations area of an organization or taking one over and really trying to um, structure it in a way that, that suits your particular skill set and the needs of the organization. So let's take a look at how we do that. How do we, where do we start in setting these types of things up? So when we're thinking about setting up a PR program or media relations program, I like to think of things in, in systems format. And if you're familiar with systems, you know that that we're looking at input, throughput, and output then. Everything in an organization really has, you know, has inputs that we have to be concerned with, things we're gathering in like a funnel and taking them in. And then we process those things and we put our own spin on them and, and make them work for us in the throughput area. And then eventually we have output, things that, that we actually produce then, right? As a, as, a, as a product or as a service or, or whatever it is. We have that output then and setting up a public relations program really involves all of these stages. So when we look at input, it's important to remember that we have inputs for any kind of media relations or public relations program. We need to understand what is the mission of this organization? What does this organization do? Where are they going? What's their mission? What's their vision? What are the philosophies that guide the management and the, the actual work of this organization? Um, what are the values that, that this organization and the executive leadership and the employees hold? And, and how is this organization seen in terms of what it values and how it values those things? And what are the publics that are involved here? Both what are the publics that, that, uh, that can provide inputs to this organization? that have an influence on, on what comes into the organization and also those that we need to be concerned with in reaching through public relations and media relations, who are the publics that we're most interested in, in connecting with and reaching. We need to understand all of this as input, right? So before we ever get started, we have to have a, a really solid understanding of what makes this organization tick. What was it founded for? What is it doing now? Where is it going in 10 years and 20 years and whatever? What's the mission of this organization? What is their vision? And then again, what are those guiding philosophies and values that this organization holds? You just look at, at companies across the United States and you can see that there are a variety of different value systems and philosophies in place in terms of how organizations are structured, how they, how they operate on a daily basis. So you look at, you know, a very traditional organization, maybe a manufacturing organization. It's probably very structured and hierarchical and there's a process for everything very specific, you know, the, the goals, efficiency and things like that. But you look at some, maybe new tech company like Google or, uh, you know, Facebook, Meta, whatever, Twitter, those types of places are a little looser. They're not as structured. They're not, you know, you might have the ping pong table in the, in the lounge or whatever, or the nap pods. And, and those are great, but, but it's also just, they inc encourage creativity and, uh, and, you know, more of a hipness, so to speak. And so what are the values of this organization? What is it that, that they pride themselves on? How do they operate? How do they see themselves? We need to understand all of that before we ever do a single thing in terms of public relations or media relations. We have to have a really solid grasp of who that organization is, what that organization is, what's their, what do they value? What's the leadership there? What's the general communication tone and style? And so there's a lot of things to consider as far as inputs. We've got to have a really firm understanding of what we're dealing with. Right. So once we gather all that, though, we gather all that information, we, we have that as our input, and then we can start looking at throughput, which is how do we use all of that information from the input? How does that impact what we're doing and how do we use that to structure a program? So here we're looking at things like these are things that will influence and then we, and then we start creating things like strategy and policies and tools and procedures. So thinking about Okay, what's our strategy going to be? Uh, what's our social media tone and voice going to be? What's our strategy for reaching media and connecting with media? How much media exposure do we want? Or do we want to keep it limited? Is that our goal? Are we trying to stay under the radar and not be as, as known? And, or do we have information that's proprietary that we need to protect? So we need to have a strategy for how we're going to 
based on what we know about that organization, then a strategy for how are we going to handle our public relations and media relations? We need to develop an overall strategy for those types of things. And then we develop policies around, you know, when, when should things go out? Who has authority to release information and, and how should it be released? And, and uh, how does that fit in with the rest of the organization? Remember, we're not on an island here. We're part of a group. We're part of a team that includes, you know, executive leadership and accounting and marketing and production and whatever, you know, departments you have. It's not just you. So we have to have policies that fall in line with the overall organization as well. But we certainly ought to have policies within our own department that say, this is how things are going to be handled. That kind of ties into procedures as well in terms of who's responsible for what, how things should be done. How should a press release be organized? Is there a particular letterhead that we need to use or a particular, you know, branding, thinking in terms of branding or the particular image and logo and ways that, that needs to be presented or particular color schemes? And what are the procedures for making those decisions and deciding when something goes on and things? And then what are the tools that we're going to use? Are we going to use social media? Are we going to have um, the ability to produce things in house in terms of video and audio and, and help media out in that way, help our, help our media partners out in that way by producing some of these things in, in, in house. And so what tools do we need? What kind of software do we need for our computers? And, and just, you know, do we need style books? What kind of, you know, uh, APA or, or, or AP or Chicago style books are we going to use depending on what media outlets we're dealing with and, and, uh, or, you know, so what tools do we need? We need to start gathering those things and also uh, gathering uh, information for ex our external partners, putting those tools together. Do we have a website, our webpage where we're going to offer basic information about our organization, about the history and about, you know, the, the hierarchy, the, 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 you know, the public facing executives and how to contact people or how to contact that, you know, those types of things. We need to think through those types of tools. So based on what we learn about the organization uh, through input, what we learn about the organization's goals, which should guide us, of course, our department should very much be in tune with and in line with the organization overall overarching organizational goals and driving them toward that. Of course, we're part of that organization. Our job is to help guide and direct that organization toward those goals and help them achieve those goals. So we have to know what they are, first of all. So we need to identify, you know, Again, through input, the mission, the vision, the philosophy, the values and things like that, and then use those pieces of information to guide the, the development and the, the execution of our strategy, our policies, our tools, procedures, things like that. That all still happens internally, right? That all happens within our department. That's all going on within. If you are the department, then it's going on with you or your team, your public relations, media relations team will work together along with your partners in the organization, the heads of different departments and, and the executive leadership to develop all of those tools and all of those pieces, right? So, um, so we need to consider all of that as part of throughput. So we have our input. Now we have our throughput when we're using those pieces to develop our own plan. And then finally, we need to consider, okay, what's this look like on the way out? What's this look like in terms of output? We need to think about, okay, what are our networks here? Who are our networks? Not just, I'm not talking about like television networks. I'm talking about our, our networking, right? Who are our media partners and, and what do we need to do to connect with them and develop those relationships? Media is all about relationships as we're going to touch on here in just a second, but, but relationships, how do we start to develop the relationships with the key members and the influencers in the media that are important to helping us achieve our goals? What do we need to do and, and look at in terms of earned media, meaning media that we don't purchase that's advertising, but earned media mentions in the newspaper mentions in the news, you know, mentions in, in public events and things like that. And how do we, how do we go about achieving that earned media? That's an output, a publicly facing output for our organization as well. How are we going to use social media and engage? If at all, are we going to use social media? And then if so, how are we going to do that? What kind of events do we need to be a part of, or do we need to be putting together? Those types of things are all Externally, that's what the that's what the public is going to see. Those are the ways that we're going to to literally connect with our media partners and with our public. So that's our output then. So we need to think about all of these things from the very beginning. First of all, get a handle on what our input is that will guide our throughput so we can develop those and put into place those the strategies and our policies and, and assemble our tools that we need so that we can create 
the things that will eventually become our op output then. So that's our process. And then all of that will then influence our inputs again. And it's kind of cyclical, really. I have it here as a, as a kind of a process, but really as a, a, a life cycle. All of these things feed back into one another. And, and we use that, that new information to develop and, and refine our strategies and our policies and tools and things like that so we can create better output. So it's really just this never-ending cycle. And that builds on itself, but setting up a PR program, we need to be, to think about, you know, take a step back and look at all of these things and what do they look like uh, on the whole as we move forward. So those are the kind of the keys to what we're going to be looking at in terms of setting up a PR program. One of the things I do want to emphasize here, though, is building those effective relationships, media relations in, in particular, public relations in general, but media relations in particular is all about building effective relationships. So a couple of things to keep in mind as we think about building those key relationships with our media partners is that, first of all, the media is made up of people. The media is not this you know, uh, ethereal thing that's kind of out in the world. It's, it's people, you know, there are media organizations, media companies, media channels, and so forth. But really when it comes down to it, the media is people is made up of people. So we need to remember that. And that's why we need to, to build those relationships uh, because the media is not, it's not just a matter of identifying what TV channel or podcast you want to be on. Those are things that are run by people and decisions that are made by people. So we need to remember that when we're dealing with the media, we're really dealing with people and we ought to develop and sincerely cultivate those relationships and, uh, and, and really focus on those people then behind the media. We also need to, to be working in terms of mutual benefit. Uh, the media is an org they're, they're a company. They have, they have responsibilities. I mean, there may be, um, it may be a financial responsibility to make money for their stockholders, of course, but they also have a responsibility to the public. If you're talking about the news media to be truthful, to be honest, to be, um, to be sharing effective information and useful information with their audience. So they have responsibilities as well. We have to find that area where uh, our needs meet their needs, right? And where that intersection is, where we find that mutual benefit between what's good for us and also what's good for them, what's appropriate for us and what's appropriate for them. So we need to keep that in mind that they have a job to do. They have, they have responsibilities of their own. So we need to do our part in helping find and establish that mutual benefit between our goals and their goals. I also want to choose wisely in terms of what media we get engaged in. Um, it's, uh, and that's not to say that some is really evil and some is I mean, obviously it could be, but, uh, but really what I mean by this is, what's going to be the most effective for our organization. If, if we're trying to reach a, a particular audience or a particular public, then we need to identify, identify what n media outlet is going to be the most effective in helping us do that. So we want to choose wisely. We don't want to, you know, spend a lot of time developing relationship with people in an area that isn't going to benefit our organization. You know, they may have a wonderful newspaper or a podcast or whatever, but if it's not going to reach the people we want it to, then it's not going to do us any good. We need to choose wisely in terms of how we're engaging and how we're using our time and expending our energy. So we want to make sure that we're choosing uh, and investing in these relationships that are going to benefit us. And, and uh, so we need to choose those wisely then. We need to remember too, again, these, these are people, they have jobs, they have responsibilities. So what, what can we do to make their life easier? As we look to build these relationships, there are things that we can do to make their jobs easier, make their life easier. And there are things that we can do to make it harder, which is not going to please them, right? I'm not going to make, do us any favors or, or make us any friends. So what can we do to make their life easier? Just some very simple things like what kind of writing style are we using? Are we using, I mean, if it's a print publication, are we using the appropriate, you know, are we using AP style format for writing or do they use Chicago depending on the, uh, depending on the, the venue, depending on the, the the requirements of their publication, they may have a particular writing style. So we can keep that in mind and we can use appropriate styles so that if they're using that information, it makes it much easier for them to just kind of, I don't want to say copy and paste, but essentially that's it, you know, for them to take that information and not have to do as much editing. It'll save them time. It'll save them energy and effort. So, you know, can we use a writing style and in particular, again, like AP style or whatever that is effective for that um, organization and, and helps them do their job more easily. What can we do to develop media kits that really um, work for them? 
that make their job easier. What kind of, what can we do to, to develop things like press releases and imaging and things like that, that will make their life easier as they're trying to package and decide how to present this information. So we can make their life easier by having effective media kits, for example. And one thing we're seeing more and more in public relations and media relations specifically is the development of packaged content by the organization. What can we do to develop? I know it's people in media love, uh, you know, visuals and audio in, you know, effects and things like that, but they don't always have time to put that kind of thing together themselves. So if we can develop the tools to say, Hey, we've got this going on. Here's a quick video if you want it, or here's some images and here, here's some photographs of this. Here's some audio that you can use. And it's already built in again, that's saving them time. It's saving them energy. doesn't mean they're just going to take it and without looking at it or thinking it out and just put it on the air or put it in their publication or whatever, but it can help make their lives so much easier. Right. So, and help us then develop those relationships with them by making their life easier. So these are some of the things we need to think about as we think about, again, the media is made up of people. So we want to do what we can to find the mutual benefit in the right venues and contexts, and then make their life easier to develop those relationships so that, uh, that we have that, that kind of symbiosis, that positive, you know, working relationship with the people from those outlets. One last thing to consider is social media. This is um, because it's coming more and more prominent. We need to think about social media as we develop these programs. We set up our programs. We need to make some decisions about these types of things. So first we want to know our purpose. Again, that goes back to input. What is the mission of your organization? What's the vision? What are the values? What's the you know general tone and feel of that organization? What is our purpose? Oh, and what value can we find here in social media? Is there any value in having social media? And if so, what is that? So we want to go into this with a very clear idea of what we're trying to accomplish in social media. We also want to know our audience. Uh, are we trying to reach an audience that's, that's younger and is going to enjoy like cultural references or is it an older audience or is it, you know, is it a more traditional one? So they're not going to like a lot of joking and, and sarcasm things or whatever it is. We need to know who we're trying to reach again so we can develop our content specifically around giving us the best opportunity to reach that audience. Let someone to find our voice in social media. You know, corporate accounts are great and some of them are very straightforward. They just share news releases and information. Others are kind of fun and snarky and, and, you know, trying to reach your audience in that way. Whatever it is, you need to find your voice. What, what is your organization? How, what's best going to represent your organization? Again, the values, the, the philosophies, the, the mission and vision of your organization, what best represents the kind of the spirit of your organization. Uh, and, and express that then through social media, be consistent with that. You don't want to be, you know, very straight laced and, and straightforward. And then all of a sudden throw in some really sarcastic comment for your audience. That's, that's not going to be something that they really understand and appreciate. You don't want to go back and forth. You want to find your voice, be consistent. And, and know, when you know your purpose and know your audience, that will help you identify your voice and then stick with that and be consistent with it and be committed to social media. If you're going to be on social media, be on social media. If you're going to use social media, be prepared for comments, both good and bad. Be prepared for interaction. Know that it's very much a two-way thing. So um, use it and be committed. Don't just, you know, post a tweet every other week and then expect people to really care about what's on your social media. You've got to be, if you're going to do it, do it right. Be committed and, and really jump in there and, and follow it and be consistent and, and use it to the best of your ability, just like you should any other tool. You know, really the key here and when you're getting started is just to start. You got to start somewhere. So start by gathering that information, all that input information, then start piecing together some of these policies and then follow through. And then again, come back to it. It's a cycle. So when you get through to your outputs, then that will inform your inputs again, and you'll have to revamp and, and uh, rethink things. And then it's just going to be continuous flow. But the most important thing is to start is just to start. You're at the starting line. So that's how we get going. And we begin at the beginning. If you have questions about starting a PR program, starting a media relations program, and what's involved in that, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Uh, otherwise, I, I hope this has been informative for you, and I hope you're looking forward to more videos along these same lines as we look at the different PR techniques. Now that we've talked about starting a program, we're going to look at some different public relations techniques that we can use and media relations techniques that we can use more specifically as we learn to develop these types of public relations programs.